Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to do some exposure blending in On One Photo Raw 2020. I have this image, which is more or less properly exposed for the room, but unfortunately the windows are blown out. While I was there though, I took a second image that was exposed for the windows. And as you can see, the room is really dark. What I did was, is I opened both of these images in On One Photo Raw 2020 and did exposure blending to come up with this image. As mentioned at the top, I have two different exposures of a little room. I have this exposure, which is more or less properly exposed for the room itself, but unfortunately the windows are blown out. While I was there, I did take a second exposure, and this exposure I exposed for the windows. So the windows are properly exposed, but as you can see, the room is really dark. So what I want to do is blend both of these images together, and you'll see it's pretty easy to do in On One Photo Raw. So what I want to do is first go to grid view. I'm going to hit the G key on my keyboard to be in grid view. And I want to select both of the images that are here. I'll click on the first one. I'm going to hold the command key on my Mac to click on the second one. So they're both selected. If you have a PC, you'd hold the control key. So they're both selected. I'm going to right click on either of them and I'm going to go down to open as layers. And what will happen is this little warning will come up telling me it's going to open them up as layers, which is exactly what I want it to do. We'll click OK. And then on one will open them in the edit panel, develop module, one image on top of the other. Unfortunately, while I was there, I did not use a tripod. Both of these images are handheld. So if I just start trying to blend those windows, they're probably going to be misaligned. So I need to align the layers. And to do that, go over to the top layer menu and down to align visible layers. And when you do that on one, we'll now align the layers to each other so that hopefully when I blend these windows in, they'll be blended properly. Now, you may be thinking that uh, why don't you just use a luminosity mask? Uh, what you probably found if you've ever used luminos luminosity masking is a lot of times um, the result is a bit disappointing. Uh, for example, let's just do it real quick. I'm To do a luminosity mask, what you would want to do is have the darker image on top. So I'm going to put the darker image on top. And we want to use the luminosity mask to mask in these windows on top of the other one. So I'm going to go back to layer and realign the layers because I did flip flop them. So let it do that. And then what we'll do is we click on the little mask icon here for the top layer and we click on lumen. That's for the luminosity mask. And you can see that it now is the room looks pretty good, but those windows really don't look very good at all. So I'm going to undo that by hitting command Z on my keyboard. And I'm going to keep hitting Command Z on my Mac keyboard. If you have a PC to undo, you'd hit Control Z. So I'm going to keep doing that until we flip the images back around. So they're back flipped uh, with the uh, this layer on top of the other layer. Now I'm just going to double check that the uh, layers are aligned. So I'm going to go the align layers again just to make sure. Now what we want to do now is we want to... Uh, paint these uh, windows away so that the layers below it come through. So what we'll do is we'll click on the little mask icon for the top layer. And when we do that, we are now has, we are using the masking brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn feather up just a little bit. And what we need to do is paint in black. Uh, so we're going to paint out what is here. So... I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And what you'll see is when you paint on a window, you'll see the window below it is now coming through. So what we need to do is be very careful and paint precisely along the window. And I'm just uh, going to go very quickly in this video. But you'll see that it isn't really very challenging. And all you need to do is continually uh, 
change the size of your brush so that you could get in there properly. So I did that first one. You can see that little edge. Maybe I didn't do such a good job right there. We could get up in there a little bit. No, that's the way it is, I think. So another thing that may help you is if you go into one extreme end, let's say right here, and click once, and whenever you have a straight edge, you could go up to where the other end of the straight edge, hold the shift key in, and click again, and you'll draw a straight line. So that may help you in some instances when you're painting. little brush uh, trick. Now, if you made a mistake like I just did, we could fix that, and I'll do that in a moment. Hold the shift key in and click there. Hold the shift key in and click there. So now I could get a little bigger brush, I think, and do this part in here. So I'll just do this real quick, if you could bear with me. And you'll see. All right, now I made this little mistake over here. All we need to do is go to the paint in brush, and then I could come in here and clean that up. And then go back to the paint out brush and go the smaller one and come back in here and fix it very carefully. And I made a mistake again, but that's okay for the video. You get the idea. And I'll click once there and hold the shift key in and click once there. And then I'll come around here very carefully without making a mistake. Typically, I would probably do this with my Wacom tablet, which is actually on my desk to my right, but I'm doing it at the moment with the mouse. But you use whatever is most comfortable. Come around here and get around the statue. Like this. And then we'll get the rest of the window. So you can see it really isn't very difficult. If I could do it while talking and trying to keep my train of thought going, Okay, um, let's come in and go back to paint in mode. And just because I'm a perfectionist sometimes, fix it over there. All right, so that looks a little better. So I masked in these, um, these windows very easily. Now we want to uh, process the rest of the image. So what you would do is we have these two layers. There's one there and one there. And what we'd like to do is actually merge the layers. So what we'll do is we'll just right click on here and we'll go to merge visible. So we're going to merge those layers together and it's going to create now one layer that has the correct windows and the correct room all merged together. And then we could process it from this point. As I mentioned, uh, the image was handheld, both images, and it's a little crooked. Actually, it's a lot crooked. So I probably want to straighten it. And um, it was shot with a very wide angle lens. I, if I remember right, it's actually, this image is a few years old. Um, I think I used like a 14 millimeter lens. So there's a lot of distortion in the image too, which I'm not really going to worry about as much. But I'll have all the gear and settings I used in the description below this video if you're curious. But what I want to do is I'm going to jump right down to transform and I'll turn that on and I'm going to level it first. And I'm just going to use these little ledges here and draw a line across there to level it. And let's just say that's good. So I'll get the crop tool now and I'll bring it in on this edge and bring it up on this edge to get rid of those blank pixels. And I'll center it a little bit. And I'll think that's good. I'll apply that crop. And it's still maybe a little crooked. It's hard to tell because of the wide angle lens. There's a lot of distortion on the edges. But I think that's good. Now I could come in and I could process it as I normally would. Maybe midtones open a little bit. And the shadows a tiny bit. There, blacks down a little bit. Uh, add a little structure, add a little saturation, and that's it. I, you know, process the image, I think, uh, adequately. I probably take my time. I do a little better of a job and maybe even add some effects to maybe, um, well, why don't we do that while we're here? We'll add some dynamic contrast, which is one of my favorites, but I'll just bring it down a little bit like that. 
So that's it. That's how you would do some exposure blending in On One Photo Raw 2020. The main point uh, to keep in mind is that when you're, you know, whenever you're putting one layer on top of the other, always align the layers, even if you used a tripod, because sometimes there's just some micro movements of the camera on the tripod and it's going to be off a little bit. So always uh, align the layers and then uh, just be very careful with the brush and determine. Now I had the brighter image on top and I masked out the bright windows so the dark windows below could come through. What you do is uh, determine which way would give you the least amount of painting, meaning it might be easier in some instances to have the dark image on top and the bright image on the bottom and then mask with certain areas either in or out that work best for that uh, scene. So uh, basically uh, make as least amount of work as possible for you. Just try to determine um, how you could do that. So that's it. Uh, exposure blending and on one photo raw 2020. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>